Hey, y'all. Uh, my name is Daniel Kelly. Uh, as mentioned uh, just a moment ago, I am a teacher at View School, and I've actually only been at View School for about six months now. But since I've had the opportunity to join the team, I I've really had a great time getting to contribute to the View community. And uh, I've, I've really had the opportunity to work with and collaborate with some really uh, knowledgeable folks who really know their stuff. Uh, my first little message to you is just, if you're not involved in the VIEW community, really get involved with the VIEW community. There's a lot of great resources out there, a lot of really cool things, a lot of really knowledgeable pe people uh, to help you out and learn more about VIEW and help you utilize it to its fullest uh, for your day job or your side job or whatever it is VIEW is for you, right? All right, so what am I going to be talking about with you guys today? Well, I want to share with y'all just a little bit about my experience uh, using Noxt on the Jamstack. First of all, let's uh, let's explore what is the Jamstack. Well, Jamstack stands for JavaScript, APIs, and Markup. And really, it's just a rebranding of the term static site. Because let's face it, the term static really kind of makes the whole approach sound a little bit limited. It makes it sound like it really can't do a whole lot. But in reality, nothing could be farther from the truth. In fact, pretty much anything that you could do with a typical monolithic website, you could accomplish on the Jamstack. Now, that's not to say you would go about it the same way. That's not the case at all. You wouldn't perform the same steps, but you can get a lot of the same in results. Plus, you can also reap some added benefits as well. And I want to share with you some of those benefits now of working on the Jamstack. So the first benefit I found of working on the Jamstack is that it's really at its core about optimal performance, okay? And the reason for that is because at its core, it's nothing but delivering static files from CDNs, that is a distributed network with servers closest to the end users. Uh, and the fact that they're static means that there's no server-side computing that has to take place at the time of the request. So not only is Jamstack fast, because yes, I can make other approaches fast, right? I'm I'm actually primarily, uh, in the past, I've been primarily a PHP developer. And uh, yeah, there are things we could do to make things faster, right? But the, the cool thing about the Jamstack was, is those things to make, the things to make things faster were really just kind of all there out of the box for you. There was nothing you had to really think about. It's just the nature of the approach. So... That's the first reason uh, or benefit. The second benefit of working on the Jamstack is that it provides better security. One of the main reasons for this, though, is that you don't really have to set up a self-managed backend. Instead, you rely on uh, microservices, third-party microservices that do things the backend would typically do for you. And so this really allows you to kind of push off the concern of security on someone else. Yes, there are still some concerns you have to deal with, but for the most part, uh, someone else gets to handle those things. Plus, all these microservices that you use, not only are you using them, but tens or hundreds or maybe even thousands of other people are using them. So they're doing things to really make things right and as secure as possible. Another benefit of, of working on the Jamstack is that it provides cheap and easy scaling. After all, what could be cheaper than just hosting static uh, static files in some kind of storage bucket? Plus, it, it provides really easy scaling. And yes, I know some people are concerned sometimes uh, when it comes to building on the Jamstack because they think that if their site gets too large, then that initial build step will kind of really balloon and just become unmanageable over time. And they'll be waiting, you know, two hours to... Uh, get some new feature up on their website. But if it's done right, it really can uh, be fast and simple. In fact, as a case study, uh, many of you are probably familiar with Smashing Magazine. Uh, they do articles and they write content for web developers and web designers like you and me. And so you've probably seen some of their stuff. Well, while you may be familiar with Smashing Magazine, one thing you might not be aware of is that they actually run on the Jamstack. They used to run on WordPress. However, now uh, they use a static site builder called Hugo. 
And with the hundreds and, and probably even thousands of articles that they have on their site, if they can run on the Jamstack, your sites probably can as well. Jamstack can scale. And the last benefit is working on of working on the Jamstack is that it provides an improved developer experience. Uh, you know, we all like to make our end users happy. We all like that our products work as well as they could. But at the end of the day, let's face it, we want to be happy working on the products ourselves. And the Jamstack allows us to do that by providing a loose coupling, allowing for more targeted development and debugging. And for me personally, what this means is I get to focus on the front end. As I mentioned a moment ago, I've got plenty of experience on PHP, but I'd love to work in Vue more any day of the week. And that's what the Jamstack allows me to do. All right, Daniel, you may be thinking at this point, you're going on about the Jamstack, but this is Nuxt Nation. What does any of this have to do with Nuxt? Well, starting in Nuxt 2.14, Nuxt actually does some really cool things under the hood to make working with Nuxt on the Jamstack as a static site generator a really great user experience. So I just wanna explore a few of those things that Nuxt does for us uh, together with you today. And in order to kind of showcase some of those things, I've built this uh, pretty cool little Batman app here. What you have on the home page is a listing of Batman movies. And then if you were to click on to uh, one of the links there, what you would find is more information about that movie. So we've kind of got the beginnings of IMDb going, right? Well, the important thing to know about this app is that all the content comes from an API. In our case, the OMDB API. And the reason I chose to do this was because this is the way you'll typically have your websites or your web applications working on the Jamstack. All your content is going to live behind some API. It's going to be um, managed by your content managers in some nice, pretty interface, something like Contentful or uh, Storyblock that you heard about earlier. And, um, and then you're going to consume that content on the website via a REST API or you know, maybe a GraphQL API, wh whatever flavor there you choose. Um, so we have a kind of likeness to a real world application there. All right, now I know I am just showing you slides here, but there is real code behind this. And so uh, I'm gonna uh, share out a link to the repo on my Twitter account after this talk. So if you wanna dive into the code further, uh, feel free to, to check that out as well. All right, so that's what we're building. Now let's take a look at the code. The first thing you wanna be aware of when using Nuxt as a static site generator is this target option in the Nuxt config it needs to be set to static. And the reason for that is it just kind of lets Nux know that you intend to deploy your site to the Jamstack. And it really turns on all these, these goodies that we're going to be talking about here in just a moment. The next thing you need to be aware of when using Nux for the Jamstack is the generate command. This generate command is that build step that we talked about just a little bit earlier. This is what grabs all the content, pulls it all together, and generates those static files for us. All right? So once the generate command has completed, what we get is a disk directory. And there are several things in this disk directory, but I want to focus right now on the index.html. As you probably have guessed, this is the home page for our Batman application. This is the page where we had all the movies listed, all right? And it corresponds directly to a single index.view file. If we were to open up that index.view file, this is where we see some of the really cool things going on. Start, first of all, you see that the, the content now is injected. It's, it's preloaded. It's statically generated right there into the HTML file it doesn't rely on the API anymore. Now instead it lives right there in the HTML. Well, this might not be that revolutionary if you're coming from the you know, server side generation of things, this is just what happens at the time of the request. But since we're working on the Jamstack, this now happens at the time of the build. And so that just makes things that much faster for your end users. And it continues to have that great SEO we're all used to having with Nuxt. 
Continuing on and, and looking a little bit more in the disk directory, we find that there's also a movies directory. And under this movies directory is a directory for every single one of the individual movie pages uh, that we have on our, on our application. And if you were to open up those folders, you'd see that there's an index.html for each of those pages as well. Now, you might be thinking, yeah, this is basically the same thing we just saw a minute ago. And for the most part, you're right. It is just that content statically generated, preloaded right there into the HTML files, just this time for the individual pages. But there's actually another really cool feature of Nux hiding under the hood here. And that is this, all these different index.html files, all these individual movie pages actually only came from a single underscore ID dot view file. And of course, that ID is just that dynamic parameter that tells the page, well, which movie do I want to display, display the information for? But the question is, how in the world did Nux know which movie, which ID to provide? How did this one file become all those statically generated files? Well, starting in Nux 2.14, we actually have what Nux calls a link crawler. And it does a lot like what it sounds it would do. It crawls through your application and it finds uh, all your internal links and says, well, if there's a link to this route, then the user probably wants or the developer probably wants uh, a page generated for that route. And so it just automatically does it for you. Before Nux 2.14, that wasn't the case. You really kind of had to give Nux some little hints on this for you. But now you don't even have to think about it. It's really, really nice developer experience. All right, if Nuxt was a typical static site generator, it could really stop there. But we're all familiar with Nuxt's way of loading the first time, and then after you've got the initial load done, navigating to different pages acts more like an SPA. So at this point, that statically generated content in the HTML files isn't enough. We need to take it one step further. And that's where this underscore Nux directory comes into play. Okay, under that, we've got a static directory and some uh, numbers there, some directory name, and then we've got another movies directory. Okay, and this movies directory really looks a lot like the movies directory that we saw before. It's got a directory for each of the individual movies. But this time, instead of an HTML file, we have the payload.js file. What is this payload.js file? Well, what this does is it actually stands in for the data returned from async data, and it works with fetch as well. But I want you to think about that for just a, just a second. Think about the implications of that. All right, you got that? It's actually really cool what they've done. What's going on now is that at the time of the request, when the user is actually doing things at runtime, our API now is never called at all, not on the initial page load and not on any route change in between. All right? Instead, we get the data preloaded right there into that payload.json file, as you can see here. Now, I've actually uh, prettied this up a little bit. It's usually minimized, but you get the idea. All right? And this, of course, comes with several different advantages. The first, once again, is things are just optimized for speed. We're on the Jamstack, and that's the way we like it. All right, we've got our content hosted on our CDN right there with the rest of our site. We don't ever have to make that external call to some, ex to some API. And we don't have to wait for that I API to compute anything, look up anything in the database or whatnot. It's all there in a flat file. And there's no extra DNS lookup on the client side. The payload.js lives at the same domain as the rest of your site. But another cool advantage of this is that the API is not even needed at runtime for the Jamstack. All right, that means a couple different things. Mainly, it means that you're going to have increased site uptime because should your site or should your API rather ever fail, well, <laughs> your end user is not going to notice it. Yeah, you're going to notice it at build time. You'll get a failed build, but you, the developer, are the only one that's going to be there for that. 
So ultimately, you might have delayed a new release by a few minutes or a few hours, depending on what the issue is. However, it's not going to affect your end user. And this is just a little um, uh, screenshot of the network tab. And just to kind of show you how this works, uh, the top um, uh, the top screenshot is just the request to the API. This is when I've, I'm running my application in dev mode using npm run dev. And there you see, yeah, the API call is made. But once I've run npm run generate and run npm run start in order to serve my Jamstack site, now it's coming from payload.js. Very cool. All right, so, so far we've seen how our content is preloaded right there into the index.html files. We've seen how our uh, content is preloaded even when we have a dynamic parameter in the route because of Nux link crawler. This just works out of the box. And we've also seen how uh, Nux provides these uh, payload.js files to make sure uh, that caching, that preloading, that static site generation works even between route changes. All right, but there's one last thing, one last really cool feature about Nux that I wanted to share with you guys today. All right, and that is that Nux is able even to preload these payload.js files if the user is likely to visit a certain route or a certain page. And the way it does that is it takes a look at the uh, links that are within the viewport, and it says, okay, because these are within the viewport, it's likely or possible that the user might visit one of these pages. And therefore, I'm going to go ahead and preload that payload.js file for those pages. And it does this under the hood by adding in a link tag with the rel attribute of, of preload. But it's really smart about this, because now when the user clicks on one of those links, if and when they do, that page uh, transition is instant. It's, it's like you're working with a native application and not a web application, and it just makes things feel that much faster. All right. Um, I don't have uh, uh, a whole lot of time now to uh, go over any other things about Nuxt on the Jamstack, but I did want to point you in the direction of this uh, blog post uh, posted on the official uh, Nuxt blog. It's uh, got a lot of information about some of the things that I've shared with you today but it's also got even more information about using Nux on the Jamstack. And I really encourage you to check it out if you're interested in using Nux on the Jamstack for your projects. All right, that's me. Uh, once again, uh, my name is Daniel Kelly, and um, I'm a teacher at View School. Right now, we've got a uh, back-to-school sale going on, and just wanted to remind you guys of that. It's a really great time to start learning uh, with View School if you aren't already. And also, uh, just for all of you startups or companies of any size out there, um, I want you guys to be aware of the, um, uh, the services we offer to you. Anyways, thank you all very much, and uh, I appreciate your time.